The Eighth Teaching The Infinite Spirit Arjuna Speaks What is the Infinite Spirit, Krishna? What is its inner self, its action? What is its inner being called? What is its inner divinity? Who is within sacrifice, Krishna? How is he here in the body? And how are men of self-control to know you at the time of death? Lord Krishna Speaks Eternal and supreme is the infinite spirit. Its inner self is called inherent being. Its creative force, known as action, is the source of creature's existence. Its inner being is perishable existence. Its inner divinity is man's spirit. I am the inner sacrifice here in your body, O best of mortals. A man who dies remembering me at the time of death enters my being. When he is freed from his body, of this there is no doubt. Whatever being he remembers, when he abandons the body at death, he enters Arjuna, always existing in that being. Therefore at all times remember me and fight, mind and understanding fixed on me. Free from doubt, you will come to me. Discipline through practice, his reason never strain. Meditating, one reaches the supreme divine spirit of man. One should remember man's spirit as the guide, the primordial poet, smaller than an atom, grantor of all things in form inconceivable, the color of the sun beyond darkness. At the time of death, with the mind immovable, armed with devotion and strength of discipline, focusing vital breath between the brows, one attains the supreme divine spirit of man. I shall teach you in summary about the state that scholars of sacred lore call eternal, the state ascetic center, freed from passion, which some men seek in the celibate life. Controlling the body's gates, keeping the mind in the heart, holding his own breath in his head, one is his own disciplined concentration. Invoking the infinite spirit as the one eternal syllable om. Remembering me as he abandons his body, he reaches the absolute way. When he constantly remembers me, focusing his reason on me, I am easy to reach, Arjuna, for the man of enduring discipline. Reaching me, men of great spirit, do not undergo rebirth. The ephemeral realm of suffering, they attain absolute perfection. Even in Brahma's cosmic realm, worlds evolve in incessant cycles, but a man who reaches me suffers no rebirth, Arjuna. When they know that a day of Brahma stretches over a thousand eons, and his night ends in a thousand eons, men understand day and night. At the break of Brahma's day, all things emerge from unmanifest nature. When night falls, all sink into unmanifest darkness. Arjuna, the throng of creatures that come to exist dissolves unwillingly at nightfall to emerge again at daybreak. Beyond this unmanifest nature is another unmanifest existence, a timeless being that does not perish when all creatures perish. It is called eternal unmanifest nature, when men call the highest way, the goal from which they do not return, this highest realm is mine. It is man's highest spirit, won by singular devotion, Arjuna, in whom creatures rest and the whole universe extends. Arjuna, I shall tell you precisely the time when men of discipline who have died suffer rebirth or escape it. Men who know the infinite spirit reach its infinity if they die in fire, light, day, bright lunar night, the sun's six-month northwards course, in smoke, night, dark lunar night, the sun's six-month southward course. A man of discipline reaches the moon's light and returns. These bright and dark pathways are deemed constant for the universe. By one a man escapes rebirth, by the other he is born again. No man of discipline is deluded when he knows these two paths. Therefore, Arjuna, be armed in all times with discipline. Knowing the fruit of virtue assigned to knowledge of sacred lore, to sacrifices, to penance, and to acts of charity, the man of discipline transcends all this and ascends to the place of pure beginning.